Hey, it's Nicole Kellerman Worth, CEO of WildBeAlive.com, where we help women get on the same team as their bodies so they can feel and look their best. When a woman realizes how badass her body is, she feels alive and is no longer afraid to create the life she's always wanted. I know this to be true because it's happened to me and thousands of our clients. Welcome to the journey of getting on the same team as your body. Hello. Okay, I'm so excited to share with you a Wild Be Alive sister. So this is Cindy, and she is about ready to graduate Wild Be Alive Mastery, right? You're you're yes. about at the end. Yeah. And yeah. The re- yeah, the reason why I wanted to bring Cindy on is because her relationship with exercise and movement through the course of this program has been night and day. And it's been something for her that has been a huge sticking point for many different reasons. Um, and one of the bigger reasons is she has rheumatoid arthritis. And I, and correct me if I'm wrong, Cindy, but I think one of the reasons why you jumped into mastery was to become somebody who consistently moved their body, right? Yes, that was yeah, my... So, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And so um, I wanted to bring Cindy on. Um, in today's episode. So you can be inspired by her story because if she can do it, you can do it. That's one of the biggest things we really live by in Wild Be Alive is we don't, we don't believe in competition or comparison or any of that. And when we see another woman rising in an area that we want to rise, she becomes our inspiration. And it's not something that we just beat ourselves up over and say, oh, well, she can do it, but I can't do it. And it's like, no, The whole entire point of bringing a Wild Be Alive sister onto the podcast is to prove to you that Cindy and me, we're real people, just just like you. (laughs) And we struggle and have like, you know, Helga mindset thoughts, shoot ourselves in the foot, all of that stuff. And if we can do it, you can do it. So Cindy, I'm so excited you're here. Why don't you just start and tell us a little bit about what your life was before while the alive in terms of exercise and movement with your body and what it is now. Okay, great. Um, well, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis um, 20 years ago. Um, that was, I was a young thirties and uh, I had an infant and a three-year-old. So that was a lot of adjusting. Um, and, you know, at certain times it was, I was moving and it was fine when I was on medicine that helped. Um, But of course there's ups and downs as that goes in life and uh, with my RA. Um, And so before, right before I joined Wildly Alive, I had an injury in my back, which was unrelated to my RA. So on top of my RA aches, pains, left lack of energy. Now I had a big injury that sent me to the ER and um, two months of solid PT to get myself together. So when I started Wildly Alive, I had my PT exercises I was doing at home, but that was, that was it (laughs) pretty much. I'd I'd try to go out on walks. I just, I just couldn't get consistent. Um, So I was very excited about when I found your program and just, just how you phrased things were the right way to do it. Just, you know, movement I loved mm-hmm. <laughs> instead of working out and mm-hmm. exercise and, um, you know, working with your body and just, I was so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then give us a little snapshot of what movement and exercise is like for you now. Um. Wow. Um, it's very exciting to me when I stop and think about it, because I've really, um, I started out in um, our first month was unstoppable. And um, I started out with three times a week for 10 minutes. Um, and your videos you do were so great. Um, and now I'm up to probably five times a week for 35 minutes. Wow. Uh, Consistently? Pretty, yeah, mm-hmm, pretty consistently. 
And then before, like before uh, the unstoppable class, before that you were just doing your PT exercises a few days a week. Okay. And that was based on pain level. So So the more pain, yeah. Not my own motivation, but. Right. So if you were in pain, you were more motivated to do the exercises. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. And now it's consistently like five days a week. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I do a variety of different things um, because that's the kind of my personality is like that. I I get bored quickly. So, yeah, I just have a bunch of different things I kind of cycle through and it's very exciting. I'm able to do cardio now, which I really wasn't able to. I'm able to go longer amounts of time. Yeah, and I'm I'm proud of myself, I guess. So, yeah, you should be proud of yourself. It's pretty amazing. So another reason why I wanted to bring Cindy on was she actually hosted um, in the Unstoppable class in Wildly Alive Mastery. Um, We have movement videos every day for about two weeks because we're really moving through the mindset blocks that are keeping you stuck from moving consistently. And, um, you know, something that they were very welcome to do after we finished a class is anytime you want to go back and do a class, you can go back and do a class. And Cindy often led a group of the sisters through Unstoppable because she really was ambitious about becoming a person who moved their body regularly. And um, so you would you would put a little group together and you guys would go through Unstoppable together again, right? Uh, we, uh, we have a Facebook group um, that we just, we do it about once a month usually. I started it in March because I was afraid I was going to lose my momentum. And so I just kind of put it out there. Does anybody want to join? I'm going to try to redo the videos and um, just to motivate each other. And that's what it's kind of evolved to is we do do two weeks about once a month and, but it's basically us. I mean, I post the video, but we talk about what we do, what we can't get done, why we feel bad, what's working. Um, And then we just encourage each other. And it's been so, so great. It's been such a great motivator for all of us. Right. Well, yeah. And we're going to get to like some of the bigger takeaways that Cindy had and what helped her really shift from not really moving to moving consistently um, here in a minute. But I think the biggest thing that we, that needs to be echoed here is that your relationship with exercise and movement is not a willpower issue. It's not about trying harder. It's not about just being a person to force yourself and wag your finger that you need to get your butt to the gym or whatever. It's, it's mainly a mindset issue. And so throughout Unstoppable, we are really looking at what is blocking you. And this is exactly what Cindy was saying is when, when they went through the two weeks, it's not necessarily just for the accountability, though that was really nice. It was more about talking about what what is my mind saying that's stopping me from moving? And where can I meet myself with that? Where can I take some of the tools that we've learned? So then we can meet with them and, you know, like just see it for what it is a little bit more. And so once you start learning that in terms of the fitness industry, a lot of the things that we're taught set us up to rely on things outside of ourselves to motivate ourselves. And one of the biggest drivers for the Wild Day Alive philosophies around exercise is that you don't need anyone to motivate you to get your butt moving. You don't need an external source. You don't need a calendar like somebody else's blueprint calendar. You can navigate yourself through the process of moving your body for the rest of your life because there are ebbs and there are flows. There are times of the year when you move more. There are times of the year when you move less, but it's really becoming unstoppable, meaning ending the cycle of starting and stopping and starting and stopping. Now, were you, were you doing that at all prior of like starting an exercise regimen and then not being perfect and then like falling off? Um, it was a constant, I'd kind of start something and then I'd have a bad day because that's life, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, either health wise or busy wise or stress wise. And, and then I'd kind of fall off and I'd beat myself up 
and uh, then I'd maybe try to start again the next week or a month later. So it was a, it felt like a battle. It really did. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to like create all this momentum again, yeah. you know, yeah. and like that's exhausting. And yeah. so it's the whole idea of becoming unstoppable is maybe it's like a slowdown and speed up of more time, less time, but it's never like a full on, I'm not a person that works out. And now I'm a person that works out. It's like really working through the belief systems with that. So what would you say is one was one of your biggest like takeaways, your biggest aha, the thing that maybe really clicked, and I'm sure there were many of them, but which one like really, really clicked for you that helped you become a person who is now unstoppable? I would say a major one is learning that I can be body led in my movement. I can ask myself, ask my body what I want to do that day at this moment. Um, how do I feel? Do I, am I really tired? Do I want to just do a 10, five, 10 minutes? Uh, or, you know, I have a bit more energy. Maybe I'll do a half hour video. You know, it just, I can ask myself, I can realize now that I can stop and hear myself, <laughs> which is a big, that's a big, a big ask, a big learning curve for that. Um, but now that I can stop and ask and listen, I can kind of tell what I need each day. Right. Right. So, yeah. So something that we teach within Wild the Alive is body led movement, where we let your body make the choice, which <laughs> as somebody who is outside of Wild the Alive, a common uh, objection to this philosophy is, well, my body just doesn't want to move. My, I'm just, I'm just a lazy, you know, I'm just, I'm a type B person. I'm not somebody who has a lot of energy. And, you know, I'll argue that, that our bodies are designed to move. They're designed to be in movement. They're not designed to sit for long periods of time. The, the biggest thing about this philosophy, and I'm sure you can attest to this, Cindy, is learning how to listen, opening up the lines of communication. So when you ask the question, put your hand on your body and ask your body, how would you like to move today? Um, is being able to listen and then being able to trust and honor her without getting in the way of your mind. Because again, like some of the cultural conditioning around fitness is go big or go home, right? If you're not sweating, it's not worth it. And so we get this idea that, you know, just like Cindy was saying, is if her body is maybe calling her to do something a little bit more nurturing that day, if it is just your PT exercises, or if it's doing some yoga or Pilates or going just for a gentle walk outside, the key is to understand that that is valuable that that matters, that that counts. And so this, again, where this start stop idea comes from is like your mind wants to say, oh, you just went on a 10 minute walk. That doesn't count. So then you get, you get stuck in the cycle of starting and stopping. So when you started slowing down, when you had your, your waves of um, nur more nurturing, slower movements, did you feel like at first you had to kind of really work with your mind to see that that was something that was of value and it counted? Yeah, um, it was hard to honor my low times. It was very hard to say, you know, it's, it's a resting day and that's okay. Um, and that, you know, I can do that and then come back in the next day or two, whatever, you know, I, it's okay, I can keep, I, but I know to just keep showing up for myself. A pause is just a pause. It's not a stop, you know? So I just get right back to it in, the, in a day or two. And it's, I just keep going and I keep showing up for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if, if we can really understand that a walk, 10 minutes of stretching, because that's what the body is calling for, or maybe it's even all you're able to do because you've had a stressful week, you didn't sleep very well. If we can see that that counts, then 
and you know like within within the class you get like this movement tracking sheet and all these things to help kind of creates a little bit more masculine structure which I know really helps Cindy out too um it's not it's not totally loosey goosey like just do what your body wants to do every day. We have some structure in there as well, but it's more structure in terms of setting these baseline goals. Like you had said, you started out three times a week for 10 minutes. And then when the move, when it was time to move, tuning in and saying, how is my body feeling right now? You know, like, is it, is, am I just like lethargic because I've been sitting all day? Maybe I can get up and start moving and see if I can exceed my 10 minutes. Or if I'm feeling super tired and my back is really achy, maybe I'll just do a 10 minute yoga stretch video for my hips or something, you know, like it really is. And so when we cater our movement plan based on our bodies, then our relationship with exercise really changes because we're not doing it out of sheer force or homework or because we have to. It's something that like actually nourishes us and makes us feel good. If it is a 10 minute walk outside or if it's a 30 minute high, you know, high endurance or high strength or, you know, something that that works out your body and challenges your body a little bit more. So, so yeah, that's, yeah. What were you going to say? Um, it was hard to let go of all that structure and routine. Um, it was really hard, but then on the flip side, once I started listening and just, you know, doing what I needed to do for myself, um, I just felt so much better. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Felt better. Yeah. And I, I didn't go through that spiral where you just kind of forgets why you're doing it in the first place. And you're like, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. And I know a lot of your videos are very positive for me and learning not how not to beat myself up about things, you know, Oh, I let myself get to this point. It's so hard. But instead I try to refocus it as, Oh, I'm here now. I'm doing this. It's new. Of course, it's going to be hard. I've never done this before. You know, it's been so long. And that's the way it's supposed to be. But next time it'll be a little easier. And it is. So <laughs> Right. Right. Yeah. And that's something else that we we talk about a lot as well is like, you're not going to continue doing anything that feels terrible. And if every time you go to move your body, you're talking shit about your body, like you're not going to continue that. You're not going to be someone who's unstoppable. It's going to feel like work. It's going to feel like willpower to show up and move. And so, yeah, that's something that we do in the movement videos a lot is we move and we also recognize what are we saying about our bodies right now? What are we, are we being a bully or are we being a cheerleader? And I think that's, yeah, really important for you for someone who has struggled with this belief that because I have rheumatoid arthritis, I can't dot, dot, dot. So I feel like the fact that you were able to move through that belief, um, and be kind to yourself, because if you decided not to listen to your body and push through, uh, it could, it could result in, you know, some consequences for the next few days that wouldn't feel so great. And that's what would used to happen before wildly alive. I pushed too far, hurt myself, then be down a few days. And it was a bad cycle. It was a really bad cycle. Yeah. That's discouraging, right? It's so discouraging because I think, I think one of the things that we've really been working through is this belief that you can't be a person who moves consistently because of the pain. Yeah. And it was like, you were, you were kind of exacerbating or keeping that belief system even more potent and alive in your life by moving your body past what she can really do alongside if you right alongside just talking crap about her like she's listening right our bodies are living breathing feeling things and if you're sitting there and you're pushing her past her limits now we all know like and again this is something that you learn there's an edge with your body and i think if we're all honest we know what bad pain is and we know what 
okay, you know, like I'm feeling the burn a little bit and this is good. But if we continue to push our bodies past that limit, then um, we're going to wake up in pain the next day. It's going to feed the belief system that you can never be a person who exercises consistently because you have this condition that causes you pain. And it, that's the cycle. You know, this is why it's so important to really look at the mindset while we're also moving our body simultaneously. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot, you know, to work on your mindset of, you know, oh, I have pain. Oh, I have this low energy. I can't do this. I can't, I can't, I can't. But I've learned to rephrase, okay, I can modify. I can do something easier. I can do seven minutes. You know, I can, you know, there's all kinds of things I can do. There's a lot I can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So seeing, yeah, that's, I mean, gosh, we just focus on all the things that our body isn't. Yeah. When there is so much that she is. And so, well, what, what is really true about your experience is that you just built the stamina because you were moving three days a week for 10 minutes. And now you're moving five days a week for, you know, around 30 minutes. And it's not to say that you have some days where you are, um, yeah, feeling like you want to do just 10 minutes and that's good enough, but it just keeps you showing up you keep showing up when you have this more gentle, kind approach to movement. And we're just not moving just to merely manipulate our bodies. So how do you feel in your body now that you've been moving consistently? How's your pain? Um, I feel the major difficulty I had um, the last couple of years is my lack of energy. Um, and that has improved significantly. Um, my pain level is a little bit better. Um, I don't, I'm very lucky and I don't get flares hardly ever, um, though I do have pain days. And if I have a busy day, then I have more pain. But again, I recognize that and, you know, just modify for that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I'm definitely feeling a lot better. So yeah, just the ener the more energy is so hopeful for me. It pushes me forward. Yeah. Yeah. It's so awesome. So I've been thinking about, I, I would love to leave everybody with an awakening activity as we call in while the alive mastery. And this is usually an actionable around the philosophy or tool that we're really talking about that day. And I think the kindness piece is really what's coming through here. You know, there's a few things of letting 10 minutes count. That's something, you know, the power of 10 minutes as we, we talk about in the class. Um, so there's always that, but just the kindness piece, because when we are, when we move our bodies and we are just abusive, I'll just say the word because that's what it is. If you would t speak that way to somebody um, while you were exercising to a little girl, I'm pretty sure people would say you're verbally abusing her. Like that's not a very kind thing to do. And so letting the small amounts count, uh, letting the slower, more nurturing ways of moving count while simultaneously speaking kindly. I, I, it, well, look, actually not even kindly, just respectfully. Can you just be respectful, right? Like that's a really good first your step. Can do this. Your body can actually do a little bit of this. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's okay if in that day when she's exhausted, that maybe all she can do is 10 minutes and that's all right. And it's no big deal. And it still counts. You're still moving, right? Something else that we really uh, stress in the class is it's not exercise, it's movement. And, you know, the um, movement calendar or the body tracking sheet that you gave us, that's actually helped me quite a bit to see that. Um, you know, I do my 10 minute little yoga segment and I write it down. And I usually, I also write down how I felt when I did it, or if I'm proud of myself, I kind of just leave a little note there. And that's, that's helped push me forward saying, 
because you can look at the whole month at the end and say, you know, I did a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. I really did. I did all that me. So. Right. And before, you would be like, well, that walk didn't count. So I'm not writing that down. Well, yeah. that stretch okay. didn't count. So I'm not writing that down. Right. And so then you would look back on the month and think, well, it's pitiful. I've only really moved once or twice a week, but it's like, you're moving when you're walking. Okay. You're moving when you're stretching. It is movement. We're talking about movement here. So, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. And you know, the whole, like what Cindy was talking about where it was hard for her to let go of that, like hard structure of like, do this on Monday and this on Tuesday and this on Wednesday is, you know, it's a, it's a whole new learning process is what this is because it's not like anything you're being taught before. And I, it takes, you know, it takes some intention and awareness of like, okay, I'm freaking out a little bit because I don't know what to do today. And I wish Nicole would have just told me what to do today, but now I have to learn how to trust myself. But now it seems like you've really gotten to this point where you're like, I figured out like, Hmm, what my body is, what she's kind of, and it was, it was, I mean, I'm sure you can speak to this is like, it was a, there was a bit of a learning curve on how to listen to your body. Yes, there is definitely a learning curve. <laughs> um, yeah, you just kind of have to be quiet, get some body awareness to yourself. And, um, and if you're having a rough day with that, I mean, you, you always have your little backup plans, you know, we've got the wildly alive movements that you've given us or, you know, things that are on your YouTube channel or whatnot, you know, whatever is on your, what that you enjoy doing, you can just go to a backup to that, do a couple minutes, see how you feel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. Yes. Yes. I love it. Okay. So your awakening activity for this podcast is to let the 10 minutes count. If all your body can do is 10 minutes. And um, when you're moving your body, can you just recognize what the language is? What's the conversation that you're having about your body during that time? And if your body was a living, breathing, feeling thing, if she was a little girl right next to you, your best friend right next to you, how would you speak to her if she was feeling a little weak or a little tired or a little out of shape or a little old or a little fat? All the things that we say to ourselves is like, what would you say? How would you be those words of encouragement? If anything, how can you still be respectful of your imperfect body? Because there is no such thing as a perfect body and we all get out of shape and it's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be a drama. And so the faster that you can just start speaking more respectfully to your body as you move her, um, the more in shape, the faster you're going to become more in shape, right? Yeah, I think... Yeah, it starts with respect and then you start to appreciate yourself more. You appreciate your body, all it can do, and mm -hmm. you start trusting it more. It just kind of builds on itself. And at some point, you're going to get to love. It's going to get to body love. So, Right, right. I yeah. love it. I love it. <laughs> So um, if you are really digging this, we actually have something free that's going to be going on January 4th through the 8th. It's called the Embrace and Reshape Your Body Challenge. We actually talk about all four pillars um, that Wild Day Alive is built upon, eating, movement, mindset, and lifestyle. This particular podcast was centered around the movement pillar, obviously, but if you want to learn more um, and you are listening to that in somewhat close to that window, close to that time, go to wildlyalive.com slash challenge. This is actually a challenge that we typically sell on our website for $111, but we're running it for free for the beginning of 2022. So if you'd like to jump in, jump on in. If you're listening to this podcast later on, just hop on over to wildlyalive.com and there's plenty of other goodies for you over, over there. So thank you so much, Cindy, for coming. Are there any last words that you want to share? Um, I guess um, the only other thing I'd say is, you know, we're, we're giving up the diet industry. We're, and I've, I think, you know, I've dealt a lot with the health profession. And I think you, can, you yourself can define health for yourself 
everybody tries to tell us what it is, but you can do that and you can define fitness for yourself. And um, as you go through the program, you'll have your, uh, your three that uh, are important for you, why you're doing it. Yeah, the deeper three. Yes. The deeper three, yes, yes. Yes, I love it. All right. Thank you so much, Cindy, for coming on. Thank you. It was fun. Yes. If you resonated with this, I would love for you to share it with someone, to click a button somewhere around this video or audio to help us share and grow Wildly Alive. And if you would like to move on to the next episode, you'll meet Nikki, the Wildly Alive mentor, total rock star, and she's going to share with you her favorite Wildly Alive philosophy that helped her go from swinging on that exercise pendulum to total crazy exercise freak to not at all, and now finding real movement consistently the last few years. Just find your favorite podcast app and search Wildly Alive or Same Team and have a listen.